So we were at Talladega October race, and uh, everybody was bench racing. And uh, Dale Senior was there, and Ty. And Ty said, "Hey, we got we're gonna we're starting another deal. How many? We got 19 guys now, or 20. We need how many more do we need to start another deal?" And uh, I said. It was me and Jeff Andrews, and we said probably four. And and your dad pointed at us. He goes, "Well, there's two. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and Ty said, "Would you you guys mind? Would you be interested in coming over and talk to us?" And I thought for a minute, I'm like, "No, no." But, even though you were not happy with the way now, this thing was going, and I said, "No." And Ty said, "Why not?" I said, "Man." I've been next to that guy in the garage my whole life. I don't even like him. Dale but, Earnhardt. Yeah. Earnhardt. I'm like, right. man, you know, he's been my competitor. Right. And, he's going all the way back to the 80s. And yeah. and then we went back to the shop, and we were talking about this deal, you Who? know. Me and Jeff Andrews were talking about deal, how it was going to be laid out. And Jeff goes, man, you really don't like this deal. I'm like, nope. I said, I'm going to call Ty. So we called Ty. We went over. Oh, sorry. So you're looking at the HMS deal. Yeah, HMS and you're deal. you're telling him, man, yeah. you know, I just ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling it. So you decided then in that moment, man, yeah. I might call Ty, Ty. And learn a little bit more about this. Yeah, I'm going to ride over there. Okay. So we ride over there. Let me ask you a question. Yep. <clears throat> we know that Jeff Andrews has had a great life. Yep. He is in a, a massive uh, position awesome. at HMS. He's, a, he's one of the best dudes that I've ever met. Awesome. Great person. Um, he was asked – and he never considered it that to, you know, to go to, to DEI. Go to DI. He was pointed at, right? Dad was yep. like, hey, you two, you guys yep. are there. But Jeff was never in, never considering it. He was 100% plugged in to HMS, I'm asking. Oh, no, he, we both came over. Anyway. Both of y'all came oh, over? Oh, yeah. he did consider it. He considered really? it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, he was – he was um, – he still had a year left on his contract, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't. So we but both you both go over there. We both, yeah, we both stopped by Target or Walmart or whatever. Change shirts. Change shirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, but Jeff was probably only halfway right. Considering, yeah, because Jeff had a really good opportunity yes. ahead of him. Right, you know, he was gonna. Randy was moving up to take a lot higher position, and Jeff was moving into a really good position. And um, so he he went and, you know, uh, talked to Randy and, and Rick, and they said, hey, here's a path forward for you. And and he called me, and he was going to the banquet, and he said, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't do it. And I'm like, man, I understand. Um I want to do it. He said, "Man, he was." He said, "I understand, but we got this. We, you know, you ought to, you ought to reconsider." And I'm like, "So I went and talked to Randy for about two hours. You know, Randy's a was a hard guy to say no to. Randy Dor- Dorton, Dorton. Mm-hmm. and um, but I, I had my had especially after spending time with your dad. And, so talk about, about that. Yeah, I, we yeah. didn't even know hell, this meeting. What the hell was this meeting? Yeah, it was you know. Spent some time with Mark Eisen. You didn't like him. Yeah. You weren't a big Earnhardt fan yep. at all. I, I would say it's probably two two coolest meetings I had with your dad was that one with him and Ty. And, and I loved working with Ty, too. I mean, Ty was – and meeting with Ty, is, he's a hard guy to say no to. He's a really nego- good negotiator. But your dad was – it was a trip around the farm, mm-hmm. you know, and he's like – he had – and I tell people, they say, what do you think about working for Rick and working for Big E? I mean, they're a lot alike in a lot of ways because they know the next 10 years. And I tell people that all the time with, like, working for Rick, Richard, and your dad. But your dad had 10 years planned out. I mean, the engine shop, where he was going. Um, and when he talked about what the future looked like, he knew it. Uh, it was amazing what he he could lay out for you, and there was no saying no to him. Um, 
And it wasn't from intimidation, it, and it was how much he had planned out. And, I mean, he pretty much told me the first night, man, I know what you're going to do for me and where we're going. Um, it, it was just really special, uh, his vision. Mm-hmm. And we, we we talked about things and, uh, you know, from plate racing to how he was going to build a speedway program. I mean, he just knew where he was going. And so you left there pretty confident what you wanted to do. Yeah. You No question. And so what year is this? Th- this was the, this was the end of ninety seven, and uh, so you're coming over to DI. They're they're because they're going to go cup racing, I guess, well, yeah. right? Yeah, they're, yeah. Parks is, going cup racing in the one car. Yeah. Well, I this let's see. I talked to him. No, this was ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they're getting ready to start the nine, the eight car. Yep. I'm going to run five races. Yep. Um, and that's the new, that's the other deal they're talking about. Yep. Starting up. Um. Oh. Okay. I, I misunderstood that then. Yeah. So the new the deal that the they new team referenced they needed four guys for yeah. was the eight, eight, not the one. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah, the but one's the going. one has already one's running. One's running already. Yep. Got it. Yeah. They were just moving into the big shop. Yep. The engine shop. The car shop was already in there. That is well in advance. If you're talking about ninety eight, I mean yep. you would you, you didn't even hardly know you were getting the uh the Bush series right at the time and then yeah. you get that, you win the championship, but if 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 what you're saying is right, then he was, obviously he was looking in advance. He knew that there was a cup path that he was going to put Dale Jr. in. He was he was just winning, going to win his second Xfinity championship yeah. in '99. Okay, yeah. we're going into '99 though, and you're feeling some buyer's remorse. You're feeling like you want to go back to HMS. Yeah. So in the spring of '99, this second deal that's the Bud Eight team is in the middle of their five races they're going to run that year in the cup side. I'm finishing up my Xfinity career full-time, going full-time next year in the in the cup series. Um, what was wrong? Why did you want to go back? Um, I got there, and um, the end of 80, let's say 98, and we were, we were testing with the one car. Mm-hmm. Um, went testing and which worked out good. I mean, my main deal there, I got, I started building carburetors and going testing with Steve and, uh, Steve Park. Steve Park mm-hmm. And he's like, man, that's awesome. And, uh, even built the carburetor for your dad, which, uh, and, um, then it, they, they said, okay, you and, uh, Bob Burham. Are going to build the eight car engines, so that that basically went through Christmas and into New Year's, and um, I got got working on just your stuff, me and Bob, um, and I was like, man, I'm a very much a perfectionist and like systems in place, and uh, Mark Eisler was in charge. And Mark and I are good friends now, and he, you know, he works over at Hendrix, and but he was going through a lot of stuff to, um, you know, not to blame him for everything was going wrong at the time, but he was going through a lot of stuff personal in his life, and he had just come off running him and uh, Jim Gamash running a business. Um, they built high performance boat engines, and got thrown into this cup deal, and. They they had a half hour lunch for all the guys, and you couldn't even go to somewhere and eat, you know, at that point in a half hour. Yeah, and all the guys were like miserable in the engine shop, and they were all like, "Man, a lot of them are going to leave." And I was like, "Man, I just came off a place winning championships and ran like a clock." Um, so I was like, man, this ain't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what did I get myself into? Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the idea of, you know, building engines for you. Um, but the engines were failing, you know, the ones for the one car. Um, and I was trying to help, but they didn't want my help. 
So I went to Ty and I'm like, man, I don't know if I can help you. Um, so I said, I call Randy and Randy said, man, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. Just give them a notice and we'll work it out. So I went in and told Ty, I said, man, I, I got to give you my notice. This ain't working out. And I said, I've never quit a job. It was just really bothering me. Was this in the off season? This was in April. Oh, this is the <laughs> this yeah. just kind of got the season going. Right? Just got it going, and, All I, right. and I've never left a team during the season. Okay, and um, we're in, we're coming up on the first eight car race, race. in Charlotte. Holy yeah. crap! In that May, is. at the end of yeah. May, yeah. That's right. <laughs> we haven't found it. We yeah. haven't found it. Yeah, yeah. Know what it's called. Yeah. Everybody was feeling the pressure yeah. at, that, yeah. at that particular time of year. So I'm like, man, you know, I oh. said I ain't feeling good about this. So, so he called. He said, I got. I'm going to tell Big E, and um, so he was in Bristol at the race track. at the racetrack. And I'm like, this ain't going to be good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was living down Brawley School Road, you know. And we've been working to like 1 o'clock every morning, you know. And, uh, you know, I didn't have cell phones. At that point, I don't think I had one. So I think I got a call. I think he called me at my house. And Brawley School Road, it took you 45 minutes to get down Sure. at that point. He yeah. calls me and he said, hey, meet me at the shop. And 30 minutes, I'm like, how's he going to do that? <laughs> so he helicopters back from Bristol. And uh, so I meet him at the shop. I pull in, and he had that, remember that uh, orange painted truck? He had just got it, brand-new truck. Mm -hmm. um, and he had that big St. Bernard, Saint Bernard yes. in, the, in the back yeah. with a shotgun and a 12-pack. A beer. Let me say, just to set the scene here, orange truck, St. Bernard's shotgun and beer. Yep. God almighty, I'm yeah. scared for you. And he, he <laughs> look, and he just looks at me and he says, get in. I'm like, in that tone, like, get in. What the? I'm like, all right, he's going to shoot me and bury me out back. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. So I get in, we ride around the farm, and he's like, man, tell me why you want to leave me. So I told him, I really don't, but, you know, this is what's going on. And I didn't throw Mark under the bus, but I just said, it's a different atmosphere. And he said, listen, I've been know I've been known this has been going on for a couple months. He said, I apologize. And I should have made a change earlier. But he said, I got some, some things I'm working on. And I'm well, looking at somebody come in and take over the engine shop. Can you give me a month? And I'm like, well, he said, I'll talk to Randy tomorrow. I'll work it out. I'm like, okay, whatever you need. But this was like two hours driving around out back, scared drinking beer. You know, I, I probably drank more beer in them two hours than I had in a long time. <laughs> well, if he's going to shoot you, you might as well <laughs> yeah, get drunk. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, I was scared to death. <laughs> and uh, But it was great talk, you know, and I'm like, so I'm thinking I'm going to work, you know, a couple more weeks, three weeks, whatever he needs, and go back. So next day, I come uh, or Monday, I come in. Well, everybody's working normal. About 10:30, I'm working because I'm the only one. Me and Bob building engines for him to go to Charlotte and uh, getting the engine ready. And uh, all of a sudden, I look around. There's nobody in the engine shop. They're all gone. So then uh, I think Steve Meal come up and said, hey, you need to go upstairs. We're having a meeting. So I go upstairs, and um, Big E and Ty and Don Hawk were talking to the engine group. And he said, hey, we just let Mark go. Um, and just told everybody you were taking over the engine shop. Didn't ask me. Didn't talk to me about that. Damn. Didn't say a word. And uh, and he looked at his looked at his watch. Said, "Hey, I'm I gotta go to Napa for appearance. I'll be back tonight about seven thirty. We'll talk about it then." I said, "All right." 
He said, everybody good? And everybody went, yep, everybody got up. We walked back down, me, Steve Mill, Hawk, and Ty into the trophy room. And he said, um, hey, you, you'll be all right. Then left, and then Steve Mill said, hey, you know, everybody was good with it. <laughs> and uh, he said he's going to come back at 7.30 to talk to you about it. And I said, all right. And I walked back downstairs, and they started running the dyno. And uh, engine for that week, we started scuffing pistons on the dyno. It was like the worst week. I mean, everything we did was— That's not a good thing, Mike. Yeah, scuffing, scuffing pistons. Scuffing pistons was going, going bad. Yeah. So everybody's like— it was it was unreal. It was like it was like a bad week, but it was a good week. It bonded everybody together. Because um, a week before that, we were I don't know if you remember, but Steve wrecked it. What really let it off? I think why I wanted to leave. We we blew a freeze plug out, and I wanted to pin all the blocks, um, the freeze plugs in because what we did at Hendrix, and Mark disagreed. He went didn't want to do it. We blew a freeze plug out going in the corner at Martinsville, and Steve wrecked. And I remember your dad coming over after the race, looking at me like, hey, what are you guys doing down there? Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is what we should be doing. But, you know, I'm, I'm not in charge, you know, and didn't want to throw Mark in, but I said, we got some stuff to work on. And then got back Monday, and Mark's like, oh, we ain't doing that. Mm. And then we're going, getting ready to go to Texas. And I'm like, shit, we wreck a freeze plug there. We're going to hurt Steve yeah. again. So that was all the stuff we were up against. But we started fixing stuff. And, I mean, everybody there chipped in. And we had a really gr good group of guys. Oh Yeah, but wait a second. Nobody's yet asked you if you were on no. board for taking over the engine shop. I mean, I can't get past this here. In fact, it's almost like Dale Earnhardt has some sort of force-sensitive powers over everybody to tell them what they feel. <laughs> and, and it's like everybody's good with it. Well, what about the one person that they're right. putting in charge? Is anybody going to ask him? Yeah. So uh, did you ever speak up for you? He came back that night. I think it was about 8 o'clock, 8.30, you know, and I was still there working. And he came in and he goes, "Hey, you good with this?" I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, and I'm like, "Well, man, I'm some time to think about it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how nice of you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, man, I've never run an engine shop or, or or people. And he's like, "I'll tell you what, if you agree to do it, I'll be in here every morning after I feed the cows, and I'll help you." And I'm like, "All right." And he goes, "We'll we'll find somebody," and I don't think he ever looked. But he said, "Listen, uh, and and the employees hired me a plaque, uh, got me a plaque later for Christmas." And he, what he said, and he said it to all the employees later. He said, "You can hire good leaders, but he said the best leaders are born leaders." And they all bought me a plaque that said that. It was really cool. Damn, that's badass. And, that, and, and I always tell people that. Um, that's probably the coolest thing anybody ever said to me in my life, especially to come from him. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms.